Two weeks later, Dennis Smith, then manager of York City, was persuaded to take on the challenge of leading Sunderland out of the wilderness by chairman Bob Murray. With Smith came his assistant at York, Viv Busby, and Smith had a simple message. There is only one target whenever you come with it to any football club, and that is to improve them and get them out of the division they're in, unless you're in the first division, and then it's to win the championship. So uh, if, you, if you aim for the top, if you fall just below it, it's not too bad. But I mean, I want to get number one next year in, in the third division. Well, Dennis Smith's optimism was well founded, and thankfully, proud Sunderland spent only one season in the third. Because in 1987 88, not only did they bounce back, but they did it in style. It was a long way to travel for a party, but Sunderland's army of supporters came to Port Vale to celebrate their team's remarkable revival. More than 4,000 made the journey, but Port Vale's goalkeeper threatened to spoil the occasion. Gabbiadini was close several times, and it seemed Sunderland would stay frustrated. But 12 minutes from time, the deadlock was broken. Armstrong's corner was flicked on, Eric Gates made no mistake. It was the signal for amazing scenes of celebration on the terraces and on the pitch. This is what they'd waited for, the party had begun. Manager Dennis Smith had staked his job on winning promotion at the first attempt, he couldn't hide his jubilation. He picked up the tattered remains left by Laurie McMenemy, this was his moment and he savoured every second. absolutely delighted for the players and the fans who are absolutely brilliant I'm delighted for all of them after what they had went through the last couple of years to get this for them is a, a superb it's all just uh, awards about this season we've worked back hard than we are the champions and we deserve to be champions of this division but the final match at home against Northampton put the icing on the cake, with many fans arriving at the ground three hours early to make sure they could pay their tribute. Before the kick-off, every member of the Sunderland squad gets the chance to savour the carnival atmosphere. Sunderland had learnt they'd clinched the title before the game. Nearly 30,000 fans, the North East's biggest this season, eagerly await the kick-off. Northampton must have felt like spectres at the feast. They were playing for a place in the promotion playoffs. A win would guarantee that. They certainly weren't at Roker Park to join in the party. In fact, they almost spoilt it after just seven minutes. Paul Culpin forcing a fine save from Ian Hesford. But on the half hour, Sunderland took the lead. Eric Gates was brought down by Paul Wilson. Northampton protested their innocence, Gates stayed down to make the point, John McPhail scored his 10th consecutive penalty. But just eight minutes later, Northampton put the champagne on ice. Tony Adcock equalising with an opportunist goal. Their glimmer of hope was short-lived though, just three minutes into the second half, Gabby Adini set up Gordon Armstrong. 2-1 to Sunderland. It was Armstrong in the thick of things soon after, but Gates' shot, though, was well saved. Not to be denied, though, Eric Gates put the game beyond doubt in the 73rd minute. Sunderland are crowned champions of Division 3. The gloom left by Laurie McMenemy's reign is finally lifted. There's a smile again at Roker Park.
Marco Gabbiadini, who Smith had shrewdly bought for a bargain £80,000 from his old club York, scored 22 league and cup goals during that championship season. By the end of 1989-90, he'd scored a total of 70 and gained an England B cap. But their first term back in the second division was undramatic, with the club having to settle for 11th place, despite some good wins during the season. Good control from Whitehurst. Lays it off to Hours. That's King challenging. Whitehurst again. Back to Hours. And that was a fine piece of skill by Hours. And it's there. Yes. Yes, it's a goal for Sunderland in the 20th minute. To Doyle, first time flick Whitehurst. Just leaves it for Pasco, but the danger partially snuffed out. Good battling there by Gabbiadini, keeps the pressure on. Whitehurst with the touch to Doyle, Doyle across first time. And it's there from Gabbiadini. It's 2 0 Marco Gabbiadini. Whitehurst waiting for it with Parkin. He's got there, and he scored. Oh, yes, indeed. A ball back on the left wing now. Holds it, allowing Armstrong to overlap on the left, but he's overrun that ball, the ball's over on him. But Doyle keeps on the pressure, finds Armstrong. Armstrong with the cross to the far post, it's four! Gabbiadini makes it four! A lovely Armstrong cross in the 81st minute. So it's Armstrong with the corner. Curls the ball in, McPhail up there, headed away, it's coming back towards Armstrong. Hours gives it back to Armstrong. Hours back in, Knight coming for it. Bennett there, he's missed it. The goalkeeper missed it. But it was cleared. Now Gabbiadini can catch this. Squares it back. Gates scores. Yes, Sunderland deservedly take the lead. Armstrong and Doyle, the two men closest. Gray lurking just behind. It's played wide to Hours. Hours gets there. Chips it forward. And Gates makes it two. Agbuller again. Gates. Oh, what a great turn. Armstrong makes it three. Gates. Oh, this could be another chance for Sunderland. But hesitation there, but the ball could be should be played back or what's happened? Oh, yes! Chase hard to stop it, does so, plays it forward towards Gavidini, battling all the way, and it's a penalty against Lennigan. David Lennigan concedes a penalty. So it's Marco Gavidini against Ron Fearon, which he scores from. It's Sunderland 1, Ipswich Town 0, Marco Gavidini's 19th goal of the season. Zondervan tries to slot it through for Milton, but good play by Frank Gray. Oh, good turn by Pasco. Good early ball for Gabbiadini. There's only Hauser in the penalty area, though. He cuts it back. Hauser's there, but uh, Hauser overhead into the penalty area. Lemon can't get there. Hours can. Gabbiadini. Hours. Great shot. It's a goal for Sunderland from Gary Hours. Challenging by Gabbiadini, and Gabbiadini could be away, across comes Linnigan, beaten, and it's goals! Oh, what a wonderful goal by Marco Gabbiadini! Zonda, uh, it's come towards Gabbiadini again, no touch here. This time it's for 1-2 with Gates, Gabbiadini, and the penalty, brought down by Fearon. The referee quite right in not wanting to get involved in arguments. Well saved, but it's back with Gabbiadini. Nothing Ron Fearon could do about that. That's unlucky, and Gabbiadini, I think, is going in there, whereas he should have really have run away from it and uh, celebrated. Gates doing his best to keep things under control. And... 
Gavidini could well be joining Gray and Armstrong for Sunderland in the referee. Oh, he's off! He's been sent off! But among all the strange things that have befallen this club over its 100 years, its promotion back into Division 1 in time to celebrate its centenary year was most amazing and one that will be talked about for years to come. Mind you, that shouldn't detract from the fact that they played some attractive football too. Two games in particular stood out against Watford and West Ham. Sunderland being forced across the field though instead of forward, but that's a good ball to find that bowler. Pascal swerves the ball in, and that's a good header. Oh, it's at the post and it's there. Sunderland has scored. Oh, yes. The chance looked to have gone when that ball hit the bar. But Gordon Armstrong was there for the rebound. That's towards Armstrong. Manages to get the header in and find Gates. That was good, that was good play. No Gates. Into the area for Pasco. Pasco to Gabbiadini. Yes! Oh, a brilliant goal by Marco Gabbiadini. A typical Marco strike. Too high for Gates. Bracewell's touch. Armstrong. Now, yes, Gabbiadini. Yes! Oh, a brilliant piece of Gabbiadini play. An opportunist goal, if ever there was one. But that's the way Marco plays. Akbule, looking for Gabbiadini, the ball breaks towards Gabbiadini, and that's Gabbiadini's hat-trick. Well, I scored a hat-trick previously, uh, the season before against Ipswich, but um, as most of us know, I got sent off after that, so that spoilt that a little bit. Plus there was um, two penalties really that went towards it, whereas that's like three fairly good goals, and I thought the first one was very good, good move, you know, leading up to it as well. And uh, it's just nice to get a you know, proper hat trick. Now a chance for West Ham to break forward. Played inside. Or oh, the, the, the deflection there. It comes to Slater. Yes, it's a goal that counts. I thought for a moment Trelford Mills had disallowed that, but he hasn't. Sunderland finished sixth and had to rely on the playoffs to see if they'd be competing in the first division in time to celebrate their centenary year. And things were looking good when they went to St James's and beat Newcastle in the second leg of the semi-finals. John Kay with the throw. 
Owers. Chance here for Gates, and Gates has scored! Eric Gates shoots Sunderland into the lead, and that's a very important goal indeed. Hoists it towards that six-yard box. Oh, they've missed it. Chance here. McGee must score. Blocked by Norman. Quinn can't get it under control. Headed out again. Aitken to Quinn. Bennett got above him. This is Paul Bracewell. Good ball for Gabardini. Gabardini deciding to have a run at Scott, getting past him. Burridge has stayed on his line. Oh, and a deflection there. Burridge did well to recover. So, Ruben Agbula, who made over 100 appearances for Southampton, knocks in the free kick. Met by Anderson. Gates, nice touch to Gabardini. There's the cross. Stimson's there. It must be a goal. Oh, Stimson did well to recover. And Gary Owens can't believe it. Agbula's header. Warren Hawke beginning to find a little more space on this side as Newcastle commit more bodies to the attack. Gabardini now. Gates. Gabardini. A chance here for him to sew it up. And he's done that. Five minutes left for play. The Gates Gabardini combination works. And Sunderland are surely on their way to Wembley. Regretfully, they lost the playoff final against Swindon at Wembley, never playing anywhere near their potential. when fate took a hand and the arguments started. Swindon were not allowed by the Football League to take their place in Division 1 because of misdemeanours by the previous management of the club. Instead, they decided Sunderland, as runners-up in the playoff final, should be promoted. There were protests from other clubs, including Newcastle United, who'd finished third in the division. But the league remained firm and Sunderland took their place in Division 1 in time for their centenary year.